Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for watching Signs and Wonders. Um, thank you for everything you guys have done. Thank you for everyone who's done PayPal donations, Patreon. You guys are so amazing. I love you. Thank you so much. I just have to say that at the beginning of my videos. So thank you guys. So you know we're living in perilous times. I think we're living in the end times. I don't know how long that's going to be because, let's face it, God is outside of time, right? So maybe it's going to be tomorrow. Maybe it's going to be in a hundred years from now. Who knows? But I definitely think that we are living in the end times and seeing the birth pains. And um, the signs that we see are all around us today. Evident. Like, all you gotta do, all anyone has to do is just read a Bible. It's really hard to ignore all the signs that we're seeing in this generation. Especially now with this whole COVID-19 thing. This pandemic is giving nations reasons to blame each other for things. Like the United States this and China, for example. To increase between the U.S. and China over the coronavirus pandemic, the U.S. is moving forward and pursuing relations with Taiwan. Mike Pompeo became the first U.S. Secretary of State to officially congratulate Taiwan's leader after she secured a second term. RT's Rachel Blevins joins me now to discuss these latest comments. Rachel, a lot coming out of this. So first things first, what did Pompeo say in his latest press conference? Well, Pompeo started this morning's press conference with very harsh rhetoric towards China. He claimed that Beijing has been hostile towards what he called free nations, and he also doubled down on this claim that China has intentionally withheld information about the coronavirus. He now, the U.S. has sold Taiwan billions of dollars in weapons over the years so the island can defend itself, but it also recognizes Taiwan as a territory of China. And President Trump actually broke protocol back in 2016 when he announced that he had a phone call with Taiwan's leader. That, along with the ongoing trade war, has made China extremely skeptical that the U.S. is pushing for Taiwan. But not only China, look at what's happening now with Israel and China. Um, we all know Jerusalem and Israel are like the epicenter of biblical world prophecies and events and all that kind Chinese of stuff, right? So, to Israel, Du Wei died in Tel Aviv on May 17th. According to preliminary diagnosis, Du Wei died unexpectedly of health reasons, and the specifics need further verification. 57 year old Du Wei was found dead in his residence by an embassy worker. Shortly after, forensic teams and the police were at the location carrying out the investigation into his death. According to Israel media, there were no signs of violence at the scene. Both Pompeo and President Trump have warned Israel that if it does not curb its ties with China, the U.S. may have to cut back its cooperation with Israel. In Matthew Israel. 24, you guys all know the, the verse, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Um, I believe we've always kind of seen that. You know, like people, naysayers could say, well, we've always seen wars and kingdoms rising against kingdoms, but right now in history, I think it's especially more evident with this pandemic and everything that's going on. It's giving people excuses to pretty much start controversy. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas says Palestine will not be bound by agreements with Israel and the U.S. because of Israel's planned annexation of 30 percent of the occupied West Bank. Addressing an emergency meeting of his cabinet, Abbas described the U.S. as Israel's partner in crime, and he called for countries that have rejected President Donald Trump's Middle East peace plan to recognize the state of Palestine and impose sanctions on Israel. Under Trump's deal, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu could begin annexing Palestinian land as soon as July. The Palestine Liberation Organization and the State of Palestine are not bound to, as of today, all the agreements and understandings with the American and Israeli governments. I guess one good thing, though, about this whole COVID-19 is how the emissions and pollution in the world is, is like virtually gone down to nothing in areas that used to be just covered in like thick smog. They're clear as day now, which is actually really cool. Empty streets means clear skies. According to a report by Nature Climate Change, global CO2 emissions could drop by up to 7% this year if restrictions and social distancing measures persist, the sharpest decline since the end of World War II. Reduced transport and industrial activity meant that on one day in April, the drop in CO2 was around 17% compared to the same time last year. The researchers warned, however, that the change is likely only temporary. The social trauma of confinement and associated changes could alter the future trajectory in unpredictable ways. But social responses alone would not drive the deep and sustained reductions needed to reach net zero emissions. Some experts have suggested the pandemic could speed up a transition to renewables. 
But many fossil fuel companies are benefiting from multi-trillion dollar rescue packages, particularly in the US. So in Luke 21 we read, and there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity, because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. So we see yet more severe weather, and this time with Cyclone M. Fan. It brewed for days over the Bay of Bengal, but now it's hit. Waves pound the promenade of this Indian seaside town as one of the fiercest cyclones in years rears its head. The storm's powerful winds have already battered mangrove forests, with many trees falling victim. While motorists and cyclists have ventured out, braving the deluge. This deadly weather system made landfall on Wednesday along this huge stretch of shoreline between the West Bengal town of Diga and Hatia Island in Bangladesh. These satellite images captured by NASA show the ferocious swirls in red, orange and yellow as the cyclone slowed slightly as it reached cooler coastal waters. As locals club together to build walls of sandbags to limit the effects of the storm surge, in Satkira district, volunteers and police officers have wrestled with fishing boats in a frantic race to bring evacuees to safety. Another official has described the situation as being a double whammy, with authorities battling the devastating effects of this cyclone as well as those of the COVID-19 pandemic. Severe flooding in the U.S. state of Michigan breached two dams, forcing about 10,000 people to evacuate. The rising floodwaters swallowed entire towns and made bridges collapse, leading some officials to describe the situation as a one in a 500 year event. Across the Midwest, days of pounding rainwater swelled to historic floods that swallowed entire towns. The dam has failed, 100% failure, evacuate the area. The worst of the waterborne havoc swept over central Michigan, where surging waters overwhelmed two nearly century-old dams, submerging whole towns beneath the deluge and driving those quarantining from the pandemic out of their homes and into the streets. We quickly packed our two dogs, a couple changes of clothes, and ourselves. We had to do what we had to do as far as finding a place to stay, otherwise we would be sleeping in our vehicles. In a prescient warning, one of the breached dams, the town of Midland's 96-year-old Edenville Dam, was rated unsatisfactory in 2018. It's now the latest failure in a nationwide infrastructure crisis. Floodwaters blew electrical boxes <laughs> and collapsed bridges like dominoes. Bridge, after bridge, after bridge. It's hard to believe that we're in the midst of a hundred year crisis, a global pandemic, um, and that we're also dealing with a, a flooding event that looks to be the worst in 500 years. As Michigan struggled to cope, President Trump threatened to cut funding for the state over the way it is preparing for the November election. President Trump opposes an expansion of mail-in voting, saying fewer Republicans would be elected that way. And the state of Michigan has sent applications for all of its 7.7 .7 million voters to Then vote I saw by heaven mail. opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Revelation 19, verse 11. El Bosque is one of Santiago's poorest neighborhoods. And now, many of its residents are going hungry. Protests were held here last year, with people asking for work, decent salaries, and increased pensions. Since the lockdown on Santiago, many of those who had low-paying jobs have lost them. Ayuda, ayuda, alimento. Porque eso no es por la cuarentena, es ayuda, alimento. Yeah. 
Chile has stepped up its sanitary measures against the coronavirus after the number of infections jumped last week. The country fears the worst is yet to come, with hospitals at risk of collapsing under growing numbers of patients. Extra ventilators have been brought into the country. Here's a perfect example of this pandemic giving people reasons to lay blame. Check out this Trump death clock. I'm here in an eerily empty Times Square and there's a new billboard. It's not advertising anything. It's the Trump death clock and it projects the number of allegedly preventable deaths from coronavirus here in the United States. Its creator, Eugene Jarecki, a filmmaker, says that the clock, inspired by the national debt clock, measures the cost of the president's incompetence in human lives. It's based on a study by two prominent epidemiologists. They say that 60% or so of the deaths from the virus here in the US were entirely preventable. If he'd closed it a week earlier, only about 5,600 people would have died. And two weeks earlier, it would have been in the hundreds. So there you go. Every person over that who dies, I guess we can see where the blame lays. Yeah, like, I'm sorry, but I just have to say, but these people have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. Like, I'm not even American, and I like Trump. I think he took a country that was broken and ruined and did a really good job fixing it. I don't understand why so many people hate Trump. Like I, like I said, I'm not even American and I think he's doing a great job. It just kind of angers me to see people just like basically running their mouths about like stuff they really have no idea. Like two so-called experts did some study so now they have some Trump death clock downtown new york like what else like what next man wow blood on his hands i said it's blood on his hands i can wait to get my roots done <laughs> in this instance with this disease and with the way things have progressed the majority of it unfortunately rests on our government there was not enough done um, when you look at the news reports of people who were notified of the coming market crashes and cashed in on them versus protect the people that elected them to office. I think a lot of that stuff just leaves you with a very nauseating feeling in the pit of your stomach that what matters most is the money. I think they've done a fantastic job. I think Trump had limited information and we can probably blame China quite a bit. Yeah, there we go. There's my But he boy. did everything he could with what he had. Uh, I think the economy, the breakdown of the economy may cause more deaths than the virus itself. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'm going to start doing my live shows back up again. I have uh, Kent Hovine coming on the show and a couple other guests. So as soon as I can book someone to come on with him, I'll set that up. So make sure you guys watch for that. And uh, God bless you all and your families. And please stay safe.